right, Watchman of Ephraim here. Keep the boat floating. Got a lot of stuff I've been doing around the house. So, short video, keep things going. Hey, it's on the Trinity. Should only be a few minutes. This one has to do with Daniel, three, uh, excuse me, three friends. Thrown into the burning, fiery furnace for not bowing and worshiping the golden image in Daniel chapter 3. And when they were thrown into that fire, uh, someone else appeared with them. So Trinitarians like to jump on that incident to prove that Jesus pre-existed and that he was God. Here, once again, the holy supposed trinity that <clears throat> is from the mystery religion, the religions. Goes all the way to ancient back to ancient Babylon. Give me that old time religion. Trinity, give me the immortal soul doctrine. Give me heaven as the reward of the uh, saints and give me that e <clears throat> that eternal torture punishment for the lost, for the wicked, for the unjust. It's all a bunch of religious hooey. You've been uh, deceived. Here's uh, King James being presented, the King James Bible. Uh, the uh, Trinitarians like to use the King James Bible to prove uh, this scripture we're going to look into real briefly. It's going to be short. It's actually an article from the Trinity Delusion. Very short article. Uh, this is one of the, although it's a literary masterpiece, it's a rotten translation. <laughs> it's got a lot of bad translations in it. And some stuff to uh, add in to boot. Oh, I hope I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't X everything out here. So, let me just go into this little article dealing with this claim by Trinitarians that Jesus is God. Daniel 3.25 The scripture, He answered and said, Lo, Nebuchadnezzar, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. King James Version. There it is, right? The fourth is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar automatically knows that the God of Daniel and his three friends uh, has a son, uh, the Son of God, Jesus. Okay, the Trinitarian claim. Some Trinitarians attempt to claim this verse is evidence of the pre-existent son of Trinitarian doctrine. This claim is usually made by cherry-picking from the King James translation. Okay, going on. The claims versus the facts. The scriptural facts show us that the fourth identity in the fire was an angel sent from God. Okay, here's the problems with the claim from the King James Version. The following translations illustrate the problem. The fourth is like a son of the gods. That's the American Standard Version. Some of these versions I might not recognize. The appearances of the, the excuse me, the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. That's English Standard Version. The fourth is like a son of the gods, N-A-S-B. The appearance of the fourth is like that of a god, N-E-T, a New English translation. Could be. I'm familiar with that one. I got a lot of translations, but some of these I don't have. The fourth looks like a son of the gods, New International Version. The fourth has the appearance of a god, NRSV. 
The fourth is like a son of the gods. Revised Standard Version. Analysis of the facts. A simple review of the context and basic reading comprehension reveals the truth of the matter. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and stood up in haste. He said to his high officials, Was it not three men we cast bound into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men loosed and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Gods, I do believe, Elohim. Here. It can be plural. Gods, mighty ones, angels, judges. Or it can refer to just God, singular. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the furnace of blazing fire. He responded and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out, you servants of the Most High God, and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire, the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's high officials gathered around and saw in regard to these men that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men, nor was the hair of their heads, uh, hair of, excuse me, the hair of their head singed, nor were their trousers, 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 excuse me, damaged, nor had the smell of fire even come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who put their trust in him. Notice that. Who has sent his angel and delivered, not sent his son, his only begotten son, who wouldn't have even been his son, at the time when these three men uh, were uh, cast into the fire during the time of this captivity. Uh, back in like uh, the early or the late 600s, late 500, uh, I think it was 608 B.C., the first besieging of Jerusalem. That's when Daniel and his three friends were carted off. There were three uh, sieges of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. And around 608 B.C., that's when he took off, he, 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 uh, he attacked the city and he carried off some of the, uh, of the, uh, of the residents of the city. And Daniel and his three friends were one of them. Okay, so wasn't Jesus supposed to dive, supposedly uh, divested himself uh, became an incarnate baby and, and gave birth, uh, Mary gave birth to him and, and so on and so forth. Uh, these, uh, these pagan stories. Delivered his servants who put their trust in him. So it was an angel that delivered his servants. Violating the king's command and yielded up their bodies so as not to serve or worship any god except their own god. Daniel 3, 24, 28. God sent his angel to protect the servants. Enough said. So, done. False. That Jesus was in the midst of the fire with uh, these three friends of Daniel. Angels are sons of God. The context itself tells us this was an angel sent from God to protect Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Okay? Nine minutes and 30 seconds in counting this video. Okay, a short one. Probably the next couple days, three days, I'll get another one out. And then Saturday, I'm probably going to do the two house fake theology doctrine of the Hebrew roots movement. Wow, is that a brainwasher there? You're coming out of Orthodox Christianity and you're 
you get snared into the Hebrew roots messianic movement who push this two house theology doctrine. It's the ultimate brainwashing doctrine to get you to believe that you you know, have to keep the law of Moses and the whole law. Okay, so thank you for your time and thank you for listening.